All right, so next I want to talk about calculating uh, fugacity um, of component I in an ideal solution. Okay, and so the first thing I'm going to do is recall from the last screencast is we had found that delta G of mixing of an ideal solution was equal to RT sum over I XI log XI. And so we said, okay, so we could bring the RT in as its constant and rewrite this as sum over I XI times RT log XI, which must be equivalent to sum over I XI uh, G bar I ideal minus GI. Okay, and so matching terms, we found that G bar I ideal minus GI is equal to RT log XI, okay, and so therefore that G bar I ideal, okay, which is my partial molar Gibbs free energy, or equivalently <clears throat> the chemical potential of component I in my ideal solution is equal to GI plus RT log XI, okay. All right, so now where we're going with this is, well, and, okay, I, we could do this a number of ways, right? Um, so one, first I'm gonna follow the, the notes um, and go with derivation one, and then we'll come back here and go through derivation two, okay? All right, so I'm gonna box that in because we're gonna use that, okay? So that's step one, okay? So following the derivation of the notes, so the next step, step two, is to remember that for a mixture, all right, mu i, Okay, mu i at given temperature pressure and composition minus mu i naught at the same temperature but not necessarily the same pressure and composition is equal to RT log fi at TP and xi over fi naught at TP naught and xi naught. Okay. So here's the chemical potential and fugacity of my state of interest, okay, and I'm defining it relative to a standard state. So mu i naught, so this is my standard state chemical potential, f i naught, my standard state fugacity, um, where these two states are equivalent. I can define my standard state or my reference state any way I want, it just needs to be at the same temperature as my state of interest, but it need not be at the same pressure or composition. So what we're going to do is we're going to define our standard state it's being a state at the same temperature and the same pressure, but it's gonna to correspond to pure component I, all right? So it's gonna to correspond to composition of Xi um, is equal to one. So we're gonna take our standard state to be pure component I at the same temperature and pressure, okay? So I'm gonna write this as um, mu I at TP and Xi minus mu I here at T P is equal to R T log F I at T P and X I relative to F I pure at T and P. Okay. Alright, so then the next thing we're going to do is okay, we're going to assume that our state of interest corresponds to an ideal solution. Okay, so we're going to assume we have an ideal solution. So I write this as mu i ideal at TP and XI minus mu i pure at T and P is equal to RT log FI ideal at TP and XI relative to FI pure at T and P, okay? Well, for an ideal solution, okay, we just showed that mu i ideal is equal to GI, pure component value, at the same T and P, plus RT log XI. So it would follow then that mu i ideal, okay, is equivalent to mu i pure, okay, plus RT log XI minus mu i pure, okay, and that has to be equal to RT log FI ideal over FI p 
pure. Okay, so mu i pure cancels, and we're left with that RT log xi is equal to RT log fi ideal over fi pure. Okay, we can cancel the RT term so that we end up with log fi ideal over fi pure is equal to log xi. Or equivalently, how it's typically written is that fi ideal is equal to xi times fi pure. Okay, So the fugacity of component i in an ideal solution is just its mole fraction in solution times the fugacity of pure component i. Okay, And so just to write our functional dependencies for uh, completeness, we'd have the fi ideal at tp in xi is equal to xi times fi pure at t and p. Okay? So from our definition of fugacity and our expression for our partial molar Gibbs free energy, which we derived in the last screencast, we're able to show that the fugacity of component i in an ideal solution is just equal to its mole fraction times. Uh, fugacity of pure component of its pure component state at the same T and P. Okay, cool. So an equivalent way uh, to derive that is just to go back up to this expression from our last screencast. All right. So in our last screencast, we showed that G bar I ideal minus G I. Okay, and I'm going to write pure on there. Remind myself it's a pure component state is equal to RT log XI. Okay. Well, difference in molar Gibbs free energies just corresponds to log ratio and fugacities. So via our definition of fugacity, we just know that this could be written as RT log FI ideal over FI pure. Okay. And so even if we were just to use our definition from the last chapter, all right, you can just use that to equivalently show that log xi is equal to log fi ideal over fi pure. Okay, This slightly longer derivation here is equivalent, and that's just what we did in the book, or not in the book, uh, in the uh, set of type notes provided in class, and so that's what I provide there. Okay, So either way you want to show it, Okay, this one being more compact, okay, we're able to show that the fugacity of component i in an ideal solution is equal to mole fraction times fi pure. Okay, cool. Okay, so now just to make this complete, okay, so we have, so you've looked at um, homework problems and we've, you know, discussed in class calculating the fugacity of component i uh, in a pure component state. Okay, so as you think about fi pure, pointing correction should ring a bell, right? And so, um, well, we've done this before. When I have the fugacity of component i in a pure component state, okay, and let me write out um, functional dependencies again. Okay, we expanded it out to be equal to. Okay, and okay, let's take the long route. Okay, so I'm going to take the long route to remind you of where these things came from. Okay. So if I have the fugacity of component i in a pure component state at t and p, okay, what we did is we wrote it as log fi sat at t plus log fi pure at t and p minus log fi sat at t. Okay, so I'm running out of space here, but Okay, this is f i sat as a function of t. Okay, so these two expressions are just the same. Essentially, all I've done is add and subtract f i sat. Okay, and so this term, remember, this term that gives us deviation of um, the calc it, the term that corresponds to fugacity relative to that um, at saturation at the same t. This is going to bring us to our pointing correction. Fi sat, right, is useful because it just becomes Fi sat P 
API set. Okay, and so um, when we expand out our fugacity, right, we typically write it as fi pure at tmp is equal to vi sat. Okay, so this would correspond to fugacity of component i at saturation at the same t. Okay, we're talking about fi pure, so this is pure component state times pi sat vapor pressure of pure component I at the same T uh, and then uh, times my pointing correction so that's going to take the form of exponential of uh, integral um, so bring out the RT but integral of V over RT BP this would be the integral from uh, PSAT Okay, and typically how that pointing correction term is expressed is if we were to seem, assume that the molar volume is constant. Okay, so from that compressed liquid region while we're moving from the critical point, then this just becomes Vi sat. Okay, let me keep the functional dependence. Pi sat times the exponential. So it's typically just written as V over RT, if I assume molar volume is constant, times P minus P sat. Okay, so this form assumes that my liquid phase is incompressible. Okay, cool. Okay, these two expressions are uh, equivalent. This one's rigorously correct. This one just assumes that uh, my liquid phase is, is incompressible. Okay, and so remember the whole motivation for, you know, expanding fugacities. Okay is it allows us to make a series of approximations, if you will, all right? So, you know, to first order, okay, so what would this correspond to? So if I were to cover up this right-hand side, this uh, pointing correction, okay, this just corresponds to the fugacity of component I at saturation, okay? So that's gonna correspond to pure component I at the same T, but at a pressure equal to its saturation pressure, okay? Uh, all right, so this is Fi sat. Okay, so first order correction, I assume that this term, the deviation of Fi pure relative to Fi sat at the same t, I assume that that's negligible, right? So if I assume my pointing correction is negligible, uh, this term goes to one, right? After I took the exponential of it, and I'm just left with Vi sat times Pi sat, okay? Then further, if I look at my fugacity of saturation, if I can assume that I'm at low pressure, right? And I have a non-associating fluid, I can assume that my vapor phase is an ideal gas. So if I assume my vapor phase is an ideal gas, then this term is 1. All right? So I'd say this is kind of our first order you know, correctional term. Okay? If that vapor phase is not an you know, ideal gas, then I add on my second order term, essentially this correctional term. I right? calculate the fugacity coefficient. Okay? And then if this pointing correction term isn't negligible, the change in fugacity going from saturation to my pressure of interest, then I have this third term, the pointing correction, right? And I label these two terms as second and third, right? But they could be interchangeable, right? It could be that I could assume the vapor phase, um, you know, it has an ideal gas over that entire region. Um, how am I say it? So I, it could be that my, you know, vapor phase is an ideal gas, but you know, this term I'm at such a, you know, greater pressure as compared to saturation that this term can't be neglected, right? So what I'm trying to say is. This is definitely my first order term. You know, the order of these two, you know, could potentially flip, um, but this is how I would, you know, think of them, at least in this context. Okay, so if I had to calculate the fugacity of an ideal solution, then, okay, fugacity of component I in an ideal solution at Tp and Xi, it's just equal to Xi times Fi pure at T and P. Okay, so if I need to calculate the fugacity of component I in an ideal solution, it's just mole fraction times this expression. Okay, or in this expression, I can make a series of approximations. Okay, cool. Okay, um, and you know we'll we'll derive Rayleigh's law uh, in the next set of notes, but you know just for you know to help simplify uh, that term, you know. If I were to fully expand this out, so if I say the fugacity of component I, an ideal solution, 
at TP and XI is equal to XI times okay, FI pure. This becomes PI sat at T, PI sat at T, exponential, and I'm going to write it as integral of V over RT dP, integral from P sat to P. Okay. All right, so now it's just a matter of remembering again what these terms correspond to. This is my pointing correction. Okay, so this will give us the gas of component I at T and P relative to the value at saturation at T. And these two terms together give me Fi sat okay, at T. Okay, remember these are all pure component properties. So when I talk about Fi sat, this would correspond to pure component one at saturation at the same T. Okay, so this allows me to make again that same series of approximations. Okay, so um, if I'm at uh, low pressure, okay, um, so so if I'm at uh, sufficiently small pressure uh, and my uh, pressure of interest doesn't deviate much from uh, saturation, uh, the corresponding saturation pressure of pure component I. Um, well, pointing correction will be negligible if, if P minus P sat is relatively small. Okay, actually I should put like an I on there. Uh, so if my pressure doesn't deviate much from the pure component saturation pressure, this term is negligible, it's essentially one. Okay, and so that would correspond to my fugacity not deviating much from that of uh, pure component I at saturation. Okay. Then this first term, right, if I assume that the vapor phase could be approximated as an ideal gas if I'm at low pressures, okay, then phi I sat can just be considered one. All right, so if I'm at low pressures, so the vapor phase could be assumed an ideal gas and have a non um, self associating fluid, right, I can assume then that phi I sat is equal to one. Okay, and what that would leave me with is that Fi ideal, gas component I in an ideal solution at Tp and Xi is just equal to Xi times Pi sat, okay? Where we've assumed, okay, and that's Pi sat at T, where we assume one vapor phase is an ideal gas. And two, that are pointing correction is next rule. And so what do we mean by pointing correction is negligible? We mean that the fugacity of component I, T, and P uh, is approximately equal to its value at saturation, okay, that they're approximately the same, okay. When would that be true? Well, if we assume our fluid's incompressible, that would just mean that P is, you know, P minus PI sat's relatively small, right? So the pressure is pretty close to my pressure at saturation, okay. And, you know, when we talk about close, so if, uh, P minus PI sat is on the order of a bar, right? That's small. Now, if P minus PI sat is on the order of 100 bars, well, then maybe I need to, you know, think about that term, okay? And then when we assume vapor phase is an ideal gas, that's just us assuming that uh, fugacity coefficient of component I um, is negligible, okay? And so this is going to be, you know, fundamental to our assumptions made by Reynolds law that our pointing correction is negligible uh, and that our vapor phase um, is an ideal gas. Okay, cool. Um, so we'll go through Reynolds law um, in the next screencast to keep it short, but this is where we'll pick up.